Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at the problem of finding a derivative by using the limit definition. Now this is usually a two-part question. Part A is finding f prime of a, the slope of the tangent line, which we'll be doing it with the limit definition. And in this video, we're gonna go through applying both equivalent versions of that. And then part B is taking your slope of the tangent line from part A and then finding the equation of the tangent line, which is really simple. Basically just plugging everything, the slope and the y coordinate into point slope form. All right, so let's go ahead and start with a very simple function, f of x equals two x plus three. And in the problems linked down below, we'll be getting to more complicated functions. All right, let's go ahead and start with the first version for the limit definition of the derivative, and we'll go through the steps. If you're not comfortable or aware of the steps and tips that go into this, check out the video that I have linked down in the description below, where we'll set everything up and go through it in detail about what you'll need to know to apply the limit definition of the derivative. All right, so let's go through step one. The first part, we're gonna take the function and calculate f of a plus h, and f of a. And what we're gonna be using is a, the x coordinate at which we're finding the equation of the tangent line, that's gonna be a equals negative two. So step one, we're gonna have two things to calculate, f of negative two plus h, and f of negative two. Now let's go ahead and do the hard one first. And if you're not comfortable with this, what we're doing is replacing all x's everywhere in the function with negative two plus h. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with that, check out the video I have linked down below in the description where we'll go through a tip, replacing all x's everywhere in the function with open parentheses. Now, many of you are probably comfortable with that, so let's get right to it. We're gonna take our function and replace x everywhere with negative two plus h. All right, and that looks like we can simplify it by distributing the two through the parentheses. And if we do that, taking our time, we'll get negative four plus two h. And then we have the plus three at the end. And we have some like terms that we can combine. The numbers, negative four plus three, we'll write that as negative one. So we simplify this to two h minus one. All right, the other thing we need for step one is we need f of a, f of negative two, and if you go ahead and plug that in, that should be very straightforward. Looks like we're going to get negative four plus three, negative one. All right, so step one is done. Now we're gonna to go to step two, where we're going to subtract f of a plus h minus f of a. And we're gonna be following the tips, again, which we have outlined in the video linked down below, where we're gonna use parentheses. So let's go ahead and get to that second step, f of negative two plus h minus f of negative two. All right, so we're gonna plug in here everything that we just calculated for f of a plus h. We have that as two h minus one, we're gonna be subtracting, and always use parentheses until you get very comfortable with these problems. So let me put a set of parentheses around f of a, and what we're plugging in there is the value of f of negative two, which is negative one. All right, and notice the parentheses here avoid a very simple sign error. Those two negatives will cancel. We're gonna have two H minus one, but now plus one due to the signs canceling. And it looks like that simplifies to two H. All right, step two is fully simplified. There's nothing more that we can do with that. Now we go to step three, which is taking F 
of negative 2 plus h minus f of negative 2 and dividing that by h. So take your result from step 2, which is 2h, and now we're dividing that by h. And notice that's really nice because h is a factor in both the numerator and denominator. So we get 2. All right, our last and final step is we're going to take a limit as h goes to 0. And this is probably too simple. It might look confusing because notice there is no h left over. Well, what we get here, this expression is a constant value for all values of h. So if we go to the next step, which is calculating the derivative, this is where we take a limit. So we're going to be calculating f prime of negative 2, the derivative of this function at negative 2. This is a limit as h approaches 0. And we're taking the limit as h approaches 0 of this quantity, which is just 2. And that, again, is very simple because this is a constant and it doesn't matter what the value of h is, that's always going to come out to 2. So just go ahead, plug in h equals 0, you get 2. And this number, 2 there, that represents the slope of the tangent line. And it's the slope of the tangent line to this graph. at the point on the graph where the x-coordinate is negative 2. Now let's actually think about this for a second. We found that the slope of our tangent line comes out to 2, but notice here the function, it's of the form y equals mx plus b. The graph of this function is a straight line which has slope 2. So the tangent line is really just the line for your function and it overlaps everywhere with the graph. So it shouldn't be a surprise that our slope of our tangent line, which is 2, is the same here because we have a linear function for this example. All right, now let's immediately go ahead to getting the equation of the tangent line. This was all the work for the first part, part A, and part B is now going to be really simple. We're just going to be replacing the slope m, which we now write as f prime of a, Remember, a derivative that represents the slope of a tangent line. We're just going to be replacing that with the value that we calculated here, which is 2. So let's write down what this looks like. It's going to look like y minus f of negative 2. Remember, a is negative 2 here. And then it equals f prime of negative 2 times x minus a a is negative 2 minus a negative, that's really positive. All right, and we just need to plug everything in. We just found the function value that was earlier in step 1. That's going to be the value negative 1. And we just calculated from the limit definition of the derivative that the slope of our tangent line, the derivative, that comes out to the, be the value 2. So if you just plug everything in, being careful with your signs, you have minus a negative, which again cancels to a positive. You get y plus 1 equals the slope 2 times x plus 2. And that is the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this function at the point where the x-coordinate is negative 2. Now we got this derivative by applying the first limit definition, just to make sure you have everything covered so that way you can be as successful as possible in your Calculus 1 course, let's go ahead in the next part and apply the second equivalent definition for the limit definition of the derivative. Next, we're going to calculate the derivative using the second limit definition. Now, if you don't like having the option and you're not sure which one to use, simple answer, just use the first one. The second version, it's a little bit trickier because it's going to typically involve factoring, and factoring's not easy. 
But let's go ahead for this problem and apply the second limit definition. Now it starts off the same. We take our function f of x and we're not plugging anything into that. But what we need to calculate is f of a, which is f of negative two, which we already did, comes out to negative one. All right, now we can go to the second step, which is f of x minus f of a. So we're gonna take the whole original function and subtract f of a. And again, because we're subtracting, we're gonna be careful with parentheses. So we have f of x, which is 2x plus 3. And we're gonna subtract f of negative 2. Again, one of our tips using parentheses. All right, if you go ahead and simplify that, looks like the negatives, again, will cancel. So we can write this as 2x plus 3 plus 1, which you can write as 2x plus 4. All right, now you can simplify this. And again, when you apply the second limit definition of the derivative here, almost always for standard functions, the result that you get here after step two can typically factor. And that's because you want the indeterminate form to cancel when you go ahead and divide in step three by x minus a. Here, that's gonna be dividing by x plus two. So you can factor this just by pulling out a common factor of two. All right, it only gets harder because the factorization at this point might be more difficult, but we'll save those for later problems. All right, now we go to the third step. We're gonna take all that and divide by x minus a. We're gonna divide by x plus two because a is negative. Minus a negative is really positive. All right, so we're gonna calculate f of x minus f of negative two divided by x minus a minus negative two. And you might want to immediately rewrite this with those signs canceling out. So we're just gonna rewrite that as dividing by x plus two. All right, and again, for these problems, this factor, which gives you the indeterminate form when you plug in x is negative two, that should always cancel. And we can see that here because we factored and had a factor of x plus two. So if we plug that in, the numerator from step two, we have that as two times x plus two. We now divide by x plus two, and those factors can cancel out. And it's pretty much the same from part one, where we applied the first limit definition of the derivative. But let's just go ahead and finish it. Now what we do to find f prime of negative two using the second limit definition is we take a limit as x approaches a, where a is negative two. And what we're taking the limit of is this result that we fully simplified here after step three. And again, notice this is a really simple limit because the expression here is a constant. So that again comes out to two. And that shouldn't be a surprise because that is what we found from the first part. F prime of negative two was two. And the two limit definitions should always give the same thing. Now from here, once you have that, it's the same equation for the tangent line. The only difference is the work involved between these two equivalent limit definitions for the derivative. So definitely try, as you're going through homework problems or practice problems yourself, apply both of these so you can figure out which one you like better. But again, if you want a straightforward, always do this answer, just apply that one. Hope you enjoyed the problem. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.